Good morning. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to everyone. Uh, tomorrow is New Year's Eve. I'm out for my third run today in a shoe that I got for Christmas, uh, the Asics Super Blast. And so far this shoe has been very impressive. I've taken it on two runs. I did an eight mile easy run. Uh, then yesterday I did another eight miles, but that had uh, mixed in intervals where I was running uh, one minute hard with one minute recovery was able to get up to I think 454 pace uh, during that most of the intervals were in the fives or sixes for the full minute so this shoe is in an impressive territory where it has a very high stack but it still re remains very light uh, the flight foam turbo foam makes up most of the midsole and that's a very lightweight responsive foam and then they put put a layer of flight foam blast plus underneath the shoe at the bottom and that gives you more of that bouncy sensation and the sink in. The shoe is also impressively stable for the amount of stack that it has. Uh, it has a pretty wide forefoot and heel and is just a very comfortable shoe overall. So far the shoe has shown me that it does very well at easy pace uh, but also that it's able to pick up the pace even though it's a larger shoe. Uh, this to me it's in the same kind of category as like a Primax Strung or an Alpha Fly, where it's like that max stack shoe. But I like this shoe better than both of those shoes. Uh, the Primax Strung is just a little bit too unstable. Um, doesn't feel as comfortable to me. Doesn't have as good of a fit. And if you've seen my video on the Alpha Fly, that one just doesn't work for me at all. So this I feel like does, I get the sensation from this shoe that I feel like a lot of people might get from the Alpha Fly, where it has that trampoline bounding kind of effect where you really uh, get your legs moving and are striding along nice and strong. This shoe is just rebounding with such nice bounce. It feels great. Uh, so it really kind of rewards you. It feels good at those easy paces, but when you pick up the pace, you get even more energy return from the shoe. And it just makes it feel easier uh, to sustain those paces when you're running. So I've got 16 miles on this shoe so far. I plan on doing a long run today, so I'll probably do at least 10 miles. Uh, we'll see how I feel today. It's pretty cold out today as well. I got the full uh, winter attire. It's a little bit windy as well, so not the best uh, to be outside for a really long time, but you know, you do what you gotta do. So uh, I'll give more of a report on these later. Super Blast. This one was surprising to me on how good it really is. Uh, one, really the main negative with this shoe is just the price. It's $200 for a training shoe, you know, not really a racing shoe. Although I could see a lot of people being really successful using this for long races like a marathon. Um, it, it is on the lighter side for the amount of stack that it has. This has 45 millimeters of stack in the heel, so that's above, above the legal limit. A little bit less than the Primax Strung, which is at like 50. That's like the biggest one ever. Um, but this shoe is coming in at 9.91 ounces in a men's U.S. men's size 12. Uh, the Zoom Fly 5 as is kind of my paperweight example of this type of shoe. Uh, that's 12.38 ounces uh, in a men's size 12. That's that one right there. And that was a shoe that I liked using for long runs. It's a comfortable shoe. It has a lot of cushioning, but it's very heavy, so you really can't turn up the speed with it. What was really impressive with this one was when I was doing my intervals and really pushing hard, I was able to get up to 4 minute 54 mile pace or four minute 54 second mile pace in this shoe, which is very fast, uh, especially with a shoe of this size. So to be able to turn over a shoe with this much cushioning that fast is pretty unique to this shoe. I haven't been able to run that fast in anything else of this size. Uh, so kind of going back to the uh, the weights there, uh, Primex Strung, I just weighed them all rather than making you watch me put them on the scale. <laughs> so the Primex Strung is uh, 10.9 ounces. Uh, the Puma Deviate Nitro 2 right there, that's more of your uh, tempo trainer. 
Uh, that's 10.42. And then the ASIC Super Blast comes in at 9.91. So it's lighter than the DV8 Nitro. Uh, the Adios Pro 3, one of my favorite uh, marathon racing shoes, is 9.29. So it's only 0.7 ounces more heavy than the Adios Pro 3. And that one has a legal stack height of uh, 39 millimeters. So it's got more stack and is almost the same weight. Uh, then we have the Rocket X2 comes in at 9.08. Uh, and then I brought in the Hoka Mach 5 because that's a dual density midsole like this one. So I wanted to talk about that a little bit. That one's coming in very light at 9.05. Uh, and then the lightest shoes, the Saucony Endorphin Elite, 8.92 ounces. And the A6 Metaspeed Sky right over there, uh, 8.54. So some features of this shoe, it has a really light, airy upper, has a fully gusseted tongue that is padded, so I really like the upper of this shoe. Um, it does have some padding on the heel counter, there's some structure in there, it's got a nice secure heel counter. And one of the things I really like about this, which I've talked about with some of these other tall shoes, how you, your foot's kind of cradled by this foam, it sits down in it, and then it has that firm heel counter. So this is a very stable uh, heel, as opposed to the uh, Primex Strung, which gets very narrow in the heel. This has a completely floppy upper, and you sit completely on top of this whole big stack. So this shoe is much more wobbly. This one's much more stable. You can see the difference in the width there in the heel. And uh, I'm also getting a lot more bounce and explosion from this foam than I am from the Adidas shoe. So this one I'm able to run faster in, and it's more stable than the Primex Strong. This shoe really benefits from having that super thick midsole of Flight Foam Turbo, which is Asics Racing Foam. But it's definitely on the firm side. Of all like the Piba based foams, I think this might be the firmest one. Uh, so that's where in the Metaspeed Sky, uh, it's all Flight Foam Turbo, this entire piece here on the top and bottom, and then it has the carbon plate sandwiched in there. But that makes this one of the stiffest shoes that I have overall. This is like the hardest carbon fiber plate to bend of any of the shoes that I own. It's very, very stiff, very, very light, has a very thin upper. So this shoe is stiff and light and fast, but I find it a problem to run more than a half marathon in because it's so stiff, it's really not that comfortable. Uh, you're not getting really any cushioning from this. It's really designed to be light and fast, responsive, gives you a little bit of sink in and a really nice roll. It's a very fast shoe, but it's just not that comfortable for marathon miles. Uh, so that's where it's, it's very light, but if I was gonna run a marathon in one of these two shoes, I would actually go with this one. The Flight Foam Turbo Foam being a firmer foam, this shoe doesn't have a plate in it, but it doesn't really need it because this foam itself has the firmness in it that gives you that kind of snappy feel. But you can see this shoe, I can bend it. So it is a neutral shoe, but the torsional rigidity is actually really good because this foam is so firm. So it's not a really loosey-goosey uh, kind of shoe here. But then the other really big difference between uh, the Metaspeed Sky and the Super Blast is since this is only the firm foam, you're not really getting any of that sink in and bounce from this shoe. It's more of a responsive roll and more of an explosive kind of toe off. Uh, whereas with this shoe, it has that kind of bounding effect. Uh, the Fight Foam, Flight Foam, it's so hard to say sometimes, uh, Blast Plus, the blue foam at the bottom here, is much, much softer and much bouncier. That's the type of foam that they put in the Nova Blast. Um, so it does a really unique kind of feel uh, to this shoe when you're running. The midsole, it's firm and light, but then it's also bouncy and soft. So that's something that they can really only kind of achieve with the dual density midsole. Because if they did just Flight Foam Blast Plus, it's just soft, it's just bouncy, it's a heavier foam, uh, it's not gonna be as responsive, you're gonna sink into it more, so it's not as fast of a shoe if it just uses the Blast Plus. And then using just the Flight Foam Turbo, it's a firm shoe, it's not gonna give you as much bounce, it's not gonna give you as much rebound or comfort. Um, so having the combination of these two with the majority of it being the Flight Foam Turbo means it kind of feels like a plated shoe even though it doesn't have a plate because of this firm foam but it's able to give you all that cushioning at a very light weight because it's using the lighter foam and then you're still getting uh, that nice bounce and squish from the softer foam at the bottom this shoe also has a nice wide footprint in the forefoot and the heel it doesn't really taper in too much at the middle either so it's a very stable shoe whereas with the primex strong you can see how narrow this one gets in the midfoot and heel so this is definitely more of a concern if someone's an overpronator being up that high with such a narrow base where this has that nice wide base too. you can also see some cutouts in the fight form blast plus layer here 
uh, which give it a little bit of room to expand, also reduce the weight a little bit. Uh, I've seen some other people say this, and it's happened for me as well. You are going to get some rocks and twigs and stuff stuck in there, but that's really not that big of a deal. You just pick it out after your run. Uh, but these do like to trap rocks. Uh, but other than that, this Asics rubber is, is solid so far. I've got 32 miles on this shoe, uh, no real visible wear, holding up great. I have to say that using dual density midsoles has worked really well in some of my favorite shoes. Uh, so Puma did that with this one, the DV8 Nitro 2. This has the Nitro Elite uh, Piba foam in the front and then the regular Nitro foam in the heel, which is much firmer. But that means this shoe is super stable. It's able to have that squishiness and that bounce, but also maintain the stability uh, in the heel because of that firmer foam. And then another really good example of that is the Hoka uh, Mach 5. This one's such a light shoe. It's great as a daily trainer, really nice tempo shoe you can turn up the pace in, but this has their uh, softer foam on the top, so it gives you that plush kind of squishy feel and bounciness, but then they have the firmer rubberized EVA in the bottom, so you're still getting that kind of snappiness and makes the shoe feel a little bit firmer. So both of those shoes use a deal, dual density midsole really to their advantage, and I feel like that's the same thing uh, with the ASIC Super Blast. This has a very unique uh, sensation when you're running it. The other kind of best compliment that I can give this shoe is that I just want to wear it all the time now. Uh, I have I have a lot of other options, but usually you want to pick your shoe for the type of run you're doing. So it's like, okay, I'm doing a long run today. What's going to be a good shoe to absorb those miles, be comfortable? You're doing a tempo run. You want something a little bit speedier, a little bit lighter. But this shoe really bridges the gap between those two. This is probably the best long run shoe I've ever experienced. Being that it's cushioned, it's comfortable, uh, it's bouncy, but it's also still light. Where a lot of times you get into these big shoes with all that cushioning, they become heavy. This shoe still maintains a nice light weightness to it, a nice springiness in it, where you can kind of just enjoy it, run slow and be comfortable. But if you feel like picking up the pace, then the shoe really responds to you and you get all that explosive bounce from the shoe and can really turn up the pace quite a bit in the shoe. I wore the Brooks Hyperion Max for my run yesterday after using that shoe a couple times in a row and I really kind of missed that bouncy feeling. The Hyperion Max is one that I got recently that I'm also really liking but it has much more of a firm kind of foam feeling to it. It's light and has a nice kind of roll to it uh, but I was missing that bounciness that I get from the Super Blast. Um, so this is one that's really impressing me right now. So this is also a very versatile shoe. Long runs, excellent. Uh, tempo runs, it can do it. Daily miles, 100%. I feel like this shoe is going to be very durable. It's going to last hundreds of miles. Racing, I would consider using this for a long race like a marathon, uh, but it's again a little bit too much shoe for something shorter. If I was going to do like a 5k or a 10k, I'd pick something a little bit smaller, a little bit more responsive than this shoe. I'm not going to need all that cushioning and bounce for a shorter distance race, but that's really the only thing I wouldn't look to use this for. And I bet if I ran a 5k in this, I would still do great. Uh, so this is a super versatile shoe overall. Very cushioned, very bouncy, very lightweight. Really the only negative I can think of with the shoe, other than you get some rocks stuck in there, which is not that big of a deal to me, is the price. This is a $200 shoe. I was able to get it for 30% off, so that puts it at a price that I like, you know, that's in line with a lot of other shoes of this type. So it is expensive, you know, as a daily trainer, but kind of when I did the review of the uh, Primex Strung, and I was like, it's pretty good, but it's also very expensive. I like this a lot better than the Primax Strong, and it's $100 less. So comparing those two, this destroys the Primax Strong to me all day, any day. And at 30% off, this is probably one of the best values of any of the shoes I have relative to the enjoyment that I get out of running in it versus the price. So really, really solid shoe. I'll probably do another video very soon with my favorite shoes that I ran in this year. And it's funny because that one's going to be towards the top of the list, even though it's such a new addition. I've literally ran in it a handful of times, but that one has really impressed me so far. Uh, so buy it weight or second rate, $200 is a lot to pay for that type of shoe. Um, but if you're looking for a, a max cushion shoe, a uh, long run shoe, I don't think you're really going to do any better than that. It's going to be very durable as well. But if it goes on sale, it might be one of the best shoes you ever bought. Uh, so that's all I have for today. Please remember to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video.